a reading from the 21st. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. In our gospel text for this morning, we find something very interesting, as I did when I was preparing. When Christ calls himself the Good Shepherd, he mentions also the opposite side. Of course, Christ is the Good Shepherd. However, there is also those who are hired. There's God, and then there are things. There's the good shepherd, the shepherd who is willing to lay down his life for the sheep, and then there's the hireling, who once the wolf comes, gets out of there as quick as possible to, the, to let the sheep fit in for themselves. The reality is that the hireling is truly an idol. I'm not saying that it's a, it represents an idol. It is all of our idols. It's a reality. What is an idol then? An idol is anything that you put before God. It's interesting because when football season is going on, I can preach to this congregation and, and then I can look on TV and the stadium is full. By the deeds, we know where faith is. And we do know who our idols are. Obviously, in this world that says, where Christ says that, that the world will hate him, of course it would prefer football over Jesus. Which Christ says here, the hirelings have been over them. And the hirelings have scattered them into cities, into parks, into all, all across the country and the world. But the worst idol is the one that is in here. The one that is in here is the worst idol. You've heard me say that this is a one camera picture show. I can't look through your eyes, you can't look through my eyes, but everything that I perceive in my eyes, I interpret it and I can make it an idol or the Holy Spirit works in us, forgiving our sins. But it's so easy. It's so easy to fall into an idol. It truly is. When we think about all the commandments that we've broken, we've made an idol out of them. Covetousness, think about that one. Wanting something that your neighbor has so badly that you put it before God. And then there's the, there's the term, he who dies with the most toys still dies. I don't know if you've you ever heard that before. But that's true. Also, it shows the idle part of being human. I still want the toy. I might I still want the toys. I want the perishable things of this life rather than the imperishable things of the next life. I want to stay in the shadows. I do not want to be exposed by the light. I want to hide in the valley of the shadow of death. With me, my idol and the devil make three. 
And what is difficult for Christians is to see that happen and to know that only God can move through them to make them believe. I've told this story time after time, but I'm going to tell it again. In the country of Turkey, there was a goat herd, which is like a ship herd, but for goats. Well, the goat herd sat down by a tree and he fell asleep. As he fell asleep, one goat was spooked by a wolf. And so that one goat took off running and eventually galloping and then eventually walking until he walked right off the cliff, right to his death. Here's the thing. Each goat after him walked, single file, off the cliff, one after one after one after another and another and another. And when the goat herd woke up, he couldn't find his goats anywhere. So he looked everywhere and finally he looked over that cliff and there was 123 goats dead at the bottom of the cliff. This is an actual story. This is not a proverb, this is an actual story that I read in the newspaper. So you see what a hireling can do. You can also see what happens when a shepherd falls asleep. When a shepherd falls asleep, the sheep will scatter. The wolves of idols and the wolves of Satan and the wolves of demons, the wolves will come. They do come, and they're continuous, and they're ferocious. They're constant. And so it's almost like we wonder if there's any hope that we can fight back at all. Can Christians fight back? But then we realize this beautiful joy. And it can't be overstated. No matter what happens in this life, no matter what happens for the Christian, the most horrible things, the things that make people wonder if there's a God at all, Burying children, dealing with cancers, dealing with COVID, dealing with jobs, dealing with mental health, dealing with all these things. Everything that drags you down like an anchor. You know exactly what I'm talking about. It's in the quietness of your house. When you think of these things, it's in the quietness of the restaurant. It's in the quietness when your mind, when your body is still and your mind is racing. It's then that we need to remember that Christ is our good shepherd. And as our good shepherd, he calls unto us and we answer the call. The devil will certainly come after us, we the sheep, yet Christ is the good shepherd. He is not hired. He is the one who owns the sheep. And he has purchased the sheep with his own precious blood. He is the good shepherd. And the good shepherd laid down his life for the sheep on the cross. And he picked it back up again in the resurrection. We give thanks to Him for that. See, there will always be idols for sheep to chase. There will always be pains and hurts on, either, on, on, on all sides that want to drag us down into despair. 
There will always be demons coming after us. There will always be sorrow. But there will also always be the Good Shepherd. And here's the difference. When He lays down His life and He picks it back up, He doesn't walk away with it. He calls you by name. And when He calls you by name, you know His voice. And when you know His voice, you know Him. And if you know Him, and He knows God the Father, you shall be with Him in paradise. And so yes, we're here in a fight. We're here in a fight in a world that hates us. If I, were, if I didn't tell you this, I wouldn't be doing my job. But, I can tell you this as well. In that fight, there is already victory. The victory of the cross. The victory where sheep who have been beaten and battered around have their wool bathed in blood and yet come out white as snow. Is that not what we want for ourselves? Is that not what we want? That's why we gather, right? To have our wool dyed in the blood of the Lamb. To receive Christ Jesus by His blood and by His body. And in that, there can be no idol. This simplistic thing of eating and drinking, and yet the, and yet the wonder that it is Christ, the Good Shepherd, is given unto us. We who don't deserve it, but it doesn't matter if we deserve it or not. Christ the Good Shepherd has called us here and has called us to eat and drink. So let's do that. We're sheep, right? We should do what sheep do. Follow the shepherd. And come and take what the shepherd has for us to eat and what the shepherd has for us to drink. Because he has called us by name. And when we leave this church, that would be true also. But here's the difference between this church and the world. When you leave, you're going to be taking the good shepherd with you, having eaten him and having drank him. And when you leave these doors, you carry Christ with you everywhere you go in your body. So dear Christians, dear sheep, let's act like it. Let's act like we're Christians. Let's act as vessels that carry Christ around in our bodies, in faith, and in flesh. Amen. And now may the peace which surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus now and forever. Amen. Amen.